Today is World Refugee Day and to sort of commemorate it, I want to take a two pronged approach to it. So the personal and the big picture on the current state of refugees internationally. We're gonna get to the, the, the big picture, but I wanna start personal because YouTube had this great program where they sent a number of YouTubers to refugee camps around the world to sort of provide a more detailed human personal look at the experiences of those people, both in the US but mostly overseas. And TYT was lucky enough to to be a part of that. So TYT Sports' Francis Maxwell was chosen to go to a refugee camp in Uganda. Uh, filmed a number of videos uh, that are available on both uh, the Young Turks YouTube channel, also TRT Sports YouTube channel, which you should definitely watch. I've seen them, they're awesome. We're gonna show you uh, a couple of short teasers of these videos uh, starting with this. So I'm here in Uganda to look into the Bidi Bidi refugee settlement. Home to around 200,000 plus South Sudanese refugees, so an astounding amount. And probably you haven't heard much of it because, let's be honest, not a lot of people are talking about it. So I believe where we're going is to the border, um, one of which I think there is several entry points into Uganda. But we're going to go and see where these South Sudanese refugees are coming from. Uh, I don't know what I'm expecting. It's People literally coming across the border after just fleeing a circumstance that you probably can't even imagine. We're gonna have a little bit more for you. So there he's there in Uganda. But as I said, I mean there were there were YouTubers of a variety of different backgrounds, not exclusively focused on politics, going to refugee camps literally around the world. And so it's a great program by. by there were some who did their videos in English too. Um, there were some. Yeah, yeah I, need, put in the I needed the subtitle version yeah. of that. No, great, great work by friends. Um, <laughs> we're still about uh, balls, but great. Work. But, but it was great work. Uh, I'm yeah. gonna take credit for one of the few good things I've done here. Uh, at this company, <laughs> although it didn't really matter in the end. Uh, but Francis uh, was work, been working here about a year uh, and he got offered another job because his talent was recognized. And he talked to me about it and I went to Jenk and I was like, dude, this is the kind of person you gotta keep, you gotta scramble, you gotta keep this guy, right. this guy matters. And Jenk was like, yeah, I totally agree, I'm already on it. And now after seeing this, he's gonna get a better offer. Yeah, and now he's gonna, and now, oh, yeah. and now, and now he's, sure gonna, now he's gonna have to do it again. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, this was great. This was as good if not, and I said this to John uh, while it was happening and you may have heard me speaking over it. But it was, uh, I think it's the best filmed thing I've ever seen from uh, the Young Turks, like sort of in the field mm -hmm. reporting, and I uh, probably will get flack for that. But I, you know, I, there was I thought amazing from stuff Oslo from. Was really good, but yeah, you might have. Uh, I, I didn't see the Oslo stuff to be mm -hmm. honest with you, and the, uh, taking nothing from the Standing Rock stuff. Also, that was fantastic. A lot of what came out of Standing Rock, but this was just sensitive and reporting and telling a story that no, literally nobody else is telling. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, the immigration, that immigration can go well someplace, that, that they don't have the resources for all the immigrants, uh, and but they have the sentiment to mm -hmm. help all the immigrants as opposed to the rest of the world where they have the resources, but they yeah. don't have. This was yeah, a we'll country that, that was that. starving yeah. to death, Uganda, Yeah, right? And they're yeah. the ones who reached out. right. To the South exactly. Sudanese and what you know. Yeah, I, well, I shouldn't even say it's the best of. It. There's great stuff. That's it's very good, here, but it's very, very good. Yeah, one of the moments from uh, so there was a the video on TOT Sports is focused on uh, basically that that the group of the refugees are, are playing soccer, football. You can attack me for both of those. Uh, to sort of like it's a, it's a distraction. It's something to do. It's a bonding exercise and. Uh, uh, the the uh, Ugandan field was made available so two refugee teams could play against each other, and an audience of Ugandans came to watch them play. Which and the point was made in the video, but I'm not sure that in a lot of Western countries that exact same outcome would have happened. No, no, Francis, um, can you imagine in New York City if a, like tons, thousands of New Yorkers went out to see Syrians play each yeah, other? In a I would, I would like to assume that there would be some. But by the way, uh, nobody let's play would a go out more and see Arsenal play Chelsea either in the in New York. So <laughs> that's true. So those names sound made up. Okay, let's go to uh, this second clip from the video. When you talk to a lot of people. I think they they expect that you have something at times to to give them, and it's heartbreaking that you can't you can't give them anything to help. And it's not a comfortable environment. It makes me feel that when I report on these stories, I'm kind of doing them in, an injustice. Even when I report on stories in Syria, and I'm reporting it from what I've read and what I've seen, but not from what I've experienced. 
And now when you experience this, it's a, it's a completely different way of thinking what, what is actually the process. It's not just a group of people. These are actual people, human beings that happen to be resettled in a, yeah. So before we move on to the stats though, I have to say one thing. So watching the footage and especially, I don't know why, I'm actually, I don't like sports. I'm more into the football one even because he talks to a couple of refugees about their experience and everything. It's very sad, like if you're a human, you have a beating heart, you, you're affected by that. Or at least most people are because the YouTube spotlight video that went up today and is sort of a, a montage of all of the different videos and France is actually a big part of it. Uh, it went up and I'm sure the numbers have changed, but as of the last time I checked it, it uh, had 40,000 likes and well over 100,000 dislikes. And the comments were on the what's sort of- where, uh, What's it on? On YouTube. On it's YouTube. It's the YouTube official video about this. It's and a website where the you The comments are just pure Nazi rhetoric. It's just attacking, like it, this, the, the YouTube spotlight is focused on a 13 year old girl who wants to be a rapper. An old man who makes toys for refugee children, and people have just exploded with a torrent of hatred and contempt and suspicion and xenophobia. How and important, fear, honestly. overwhelming fear. John, you and I have talked about this before. Why, honestly, why do you need a comment section? Like, why, when they put something like this up here, does it matter? Because theoretically, it could start a discussion. Some discussions are more productive than others. But discussions were started all the time. But when, when you saw dogs biting kids in, in Birmingham mm -hmm. uh, in the civil rights movement, there was no comment section, but people were, were discussing yeah. it. People discussed things when they see them. And I think I, that YouTube has a lot of hope. I think that also, I think the existence uh, of Twitter and Facebook has rendered comment sections less. Meaningful. I get the idea. That's I know true. why they That's were opened up, point. but many other websites, it seems to me, and I, I don't know this, but I read some story about a, a one news site that just stopped doing comments, and, a and lot included have in that story was that many people yeah. are taking that approach. That yeah. There's no value in it. Well, yeah, maybe some for the some videos yeah. like yeah. this. If it's World Refugee Day, take the comments out. I mean, you're showing yeah. these. They, beautiful they might well videos in the end. And, yeah, it does happen. Uh, yeah, and look again, it's. It's somewhere on Reddit or 4chan, they posted a link to it and said, go, this is what you're spending your day on. And I know it doesn't matter, it's not a representative sample of anything. It's just interesting that there is something about these, like being filled with hatred and fear of everything outside of what you've experienced in your life seems to be very heavily correlated with having a lot of time to spend making comments online and, and being filled with Hope and love yeah. and all of that. It's not as strongly correlated, it seems like. I got For whatever you, there, reason. There are a lot of busy people who are filled with hate and contempt and disdain, <laughs> uh, too. And, uh, and uh, uh, France is helpless, feeling helpless there. That was moving, especially after the kids rejected his offering of pocket squares. They just didn't, they just <laughs> yeah. didn't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> that was, well, they didn't understand. And they yeah. remain yeah. to this day right. not yeah. dapper. Right. Uh, as we uh, mark uh, World Refugee Day, uh, I, was, I went and I accumulated some facts about refugees that I, I don't think a lot of people necessarily know. Uh, I mean, we've covered here at TYT uh, a number of different components of the, the refugee crisis. And when I was in Oslo uh, interviewing um, human rights activists, several of them are directly done work for uh, particular components of the, the refugee crisis. Uh, but even I wasn't familiar with some of these stats. Like that more than half the refugees around the globe are under the age of 18, even though children make up just 31% of the world's population. And so, and that was true of the, the video that we showed you of, uh, from Uganda, Uganda with uh, Francis, uh, that I believe 86% of the refugees in that massive camp were women and children. Uh, but of course, the image you see from those who wanna demonize refugees is not quite like that. Uh, additionally, uh, Turkey remains the largest host of refugees globally, with nearly three million living inside its borders. Uh, Pakistan is second. Uh, among the top 10 host nations, only one is a quote unquote high income country, that is Germany at number eight, with uh, getting up there towards uh, a million refugees and asylum seekers. And uh, I found this I found this to be so interesting that the the uh, comparison of number of displaced people for every 1,000 inhabitants. I think this really drives home the image there that Sudan is at 219 to three per 1,000 in the UK, Canada, and Australia. And uh, one of those two sets has more resources than the other. I will let you do the research on which is which. But Amazing. So oh, sorry for put that graphic back up if they if they could. Because I want to make sure. I, so the Sudan is 
home to 219 displaced people? For every 1,000 inhabitants. All right. Yeah, I see. Okay. and we is are at Sudan, or I guess it's Sudan, because these these that Francis was with were South Sudanese who were coming. South Sudanese right. fleeing into Uganda. Into yes, Uganda. Uh, and also, and just to to make sure that people understand this, so there's there's refugees, and when you think about refugees, I mean, I hope you think about things like, for instance, the people crossing the Mediterranean from North Africa and the Middle East, those populations, people fleeing Syria and all that. Um, but there's also a lot of internal uh, refugees. And in 2016, there were 40.3 million internally displaced persons around the world versus 25.3 million refugees. And so these are people whose lives have also been uprooted, living in extremely hard conditions, but not necessarily getting the same sort of international recognition because they have stayed within what is quote unquote their own their home country. And someplace, I believe Colombia is home to uh, to that, millions just inside of that Colombia. was the most surprising to me that which was number five is that Colombia leads the world in the highest number of IDPs yeah. and internally displaced persons in the world. We've covered a little bit of good news in the past year or two there. I don't know if it's proceeded in the way that uh, that we hoped it would, um, but. I mean, that's just that's an idea of the, the, the scope yeah, what of the civil, problem there. What civil war will do. You just watched the video from the Young Turks. Did you know that there's a live two hour show every day? And that if you're a member of the Young Turks, you can get that on demand anytime you want without ads. Plus the post game just for members, plus aggressive progressives, plus old school, plus so many other network shows. Go right now, tytnetwork.com slash join.